I am Abel. Welcome to my layer. Unfortunately today my gaming session did not go as planned because I lost a few games of recordings because well, something corrupted in the process and I lost them, so I'm not able to show them to you, but in the process I was able to get the Spitfire Mark 1. I just used it for one or two games before that, and I'm currently researching either the Typhoon or the Spitfire Mark 2. Today's session also had some other issues, and you're going to see one of those issues in this game in particular. Simply put, today I did not play as well as previously, but I'm not afraid of showing my worst games as well. It's actually kind of funny because I lost my worst games as my recording corrupted. I basically just got like 3 or 4 kills and barely got like uh, maybe 800 research points or even less than that. But anyway, you know, the Spitfire here. It's one of my favorite planes in real life. It's really pretty looking. And in War Thunder I mean it's a menace. Like if you play against it, you're going to notice this uh, blatantly overpowered in uh, some of these situations. Uh, comparing it to the hurricane, it's a night and day. Yes, the hurricane is technically, like if you look at the stats, the hurricane should be able to turn faster, but it's lying to you. There is no shot it turns better than this. The Spitfire is an absolute monster. You, <laughs> you cannot outturn it, you cannot outclimb it, you can barely outrun it. It has crazy good armament, especially with the tracer rounds that Actually, I already researched for this uh, version of the Spitfire here. In the games that got corrupted. Excuse me. And, uh, well, today I'm also going to be yapping some stuff. I'm uh, prepared to yap about political extremism that's on the rise in Europe right now and it's making me a bit worried. Um, internal air quality. And I don't know what else. I don't think I need to plan that much more. But anyway, um, Give me your guys' uh, input on how much you want me to edit these videos. Like, should I edit the situations like this, where I'm flying towards other planes and nothing's really happening in the meantime? Or should I keep them in the video? Then, uh, Like, if I should keep these videos uh, like this, or if I should edit them a little bit. So, I'm not going to edit them that much, because I want to do them... Basically, I want to do the video in the same time that I can do my gaming session. Or, you know, I, if I take three hours gaming, it needs to take three hours to edit the video and record the voiceover. That's the goal, basically. But anyway, there's the issue you see. I spawned the Bio Fighter and immediately someone just kills me from spawn. There were some completely motherless um, virgins in this lobby camping the spawn using the Aira Cobras that are literally untouchable if they have the energy advantage on you. And you simply just... This match is lost already. Because 3 is... 3? Like, they are not new players. They are just camping. And they are not that good at arcade either, looking at their stats. And they just abuse the fact that they are a trio, and the fact that they have a good plane, and the fact that they can camp the spawn. And just ruin the game. They have no business being able to do that. That should not be possible. This is this is supposed to be a kind of a simulator. This is not supposed to be... Yes, this is arcade. But this is supposed to have some kind of counterplay. The only way you could kill them is if you spawn in like a zero or something with insane firepower and get a lucky shot and take them down. The game completely becomes about them and having a plane that's able to counter them. Like, I'm here alone, because all of my team is completely dead. You see, there are 17 people coming for me, because I was able to escape. And, uh, well, what are we supposed to do here? This ruins the experience for everyone. I don't think these campers are having fun either, it's cheesy. There is nothing to be learned here, they're just abusing the game. I think in the end, none of them even die, and the match is just over in a few minutes. Like, here I have a possibility of taking them down, but you're going to see another reason why the, uh, these fucking planes are OP. Like, you see the amount of damage he's able to take. Like, he's already absorbed quite a few bullets, and there comes my um, thumbnail for the video that I used. I already made the thumbnail and the title for the video before recording. Trying out a new tactic, and... Yeah, these people... 
they are... Uh, I'm not going to say the words I want to use on them, but I definitely do not respect them. This is a game. <laughs> it's like you need to cheat to win or something like that. Like, are you that much of a loser? Sorry, I was like, you just are. There's no, else, no other way of saying it. Like, anyone could do it. And he's, he's saying there, like, you try doing it, you would die immediately. Like, Bro, does this look like you can fail? Like you just energy trap someone who spawns. Like either they dive away and they need to fight the entire enemy team after getting damaged or possibly dying in the process. And, I mean... Yeah, it just made me extremely mad. This should not be in the game. And I know it's been in the game for a long time because the previous time when I was playing this Sometimes you could get uh, people like this as well. And, like, you can notice they are blatantly not good by the way that they are playing. But yeah, um, I'm not going to rant more about them, because you don't get these games every every game. Thankfully, uh, these pitches are not very common, even though they are very annoying when, they, when it happens to happen. But yeah, it is what it is. Luckily, my Sunderland didn't count to my um, kill score, so I only had five deaths there. And yeah. Nonetheless, it was a pretty good game until that, especially with the Spitfire and the three kills I got. But yeah. Also, I'm trying out putting some uh, other background songs here. And yeah, they actually ac let me into their thing. I thought for a moment, like, should I? Should I not? Like, what should I do? You know, do you have Discord? Yes, I have Discord. <laughs> I saw that, and then I just left the squad. And they tried to invite me again, and I just rejected it. <laughs> Kikat said. <laughs> I'm not going to be playing like that, thank you. Like, I want to have a squad where I'm actually playing the game and not cheesing. But anyway, let's go back to the Spitfire. Um, quite frankly, I was a bit tilted after that match, so the rest of this I'm going to be taking a lot more head-ons than usual, just because I'm more frustrated. But I did manage to calm down towards the end and get some really good games. And uh, anyway, I needed to speed this until I can do really well. Um, the 2.7 is significantly harder than 2.0 or 2.3, because you get upgraded constantly. Because all of the up to 2.0, everyone gets pulled to 1.0 because there's the most players or the most matches happening in that area. Because everyone wants to try a new nation or people are really like playing with their pipelines, you know, and crossing some noobs. So you often get pretty easy games up to 2.0 and even 2.3. But at 2.7, you need to face things that aren't pipelines and players that have played the, play or the game before. So getting those crazy games with a lot of kills, um, you need to have a better plan, you need to play really good, and you need to not take head-ons like this. You're going to see. Like, even though this is a HE 100 d one and if I if I take the head-on, I'm definitely favored in it, because, I mean, he's playing a plane that's basically a flying radiator. Um, I once managed to break a fridge with my girlfriend, because we wanted to put some berries in there uh, and it was frozen so we decided to use a knife to take out the ice <laughs> from the uh, fritz and we accidentally made a hole in the, uh, you know, the thing, the, oh my god, I'm radiator and, well, it's just gone after that, it just leaked and smelled really bad and, well, the fritz was unusable after that. And that plane is the epitome of a radiator. Very, very sensitive. And after it, it's slightly damaged, it's just going to go down. But alright. Three shadow strike. Actually, four. Four kills right there. Not bad at all. So, yeah, this was a good game. I forgot about this. By the way, if you're wondering why I'm able to speak more easily than in my previous videos, it is because I used the strat of using a mouthwash right before a recording. That makes my mouth really dry, 
and it just feels easy to move my tongue and everything. But yeah, five gears already. Um, the Spitfires are one of those planes that, like, if you are using them, you are going to be, to be honest, you are going to abuse some players. The lugs, the hurricanes, the MIGs, all of those are basically cannon fodder to you, because you are practically superior in every single way. Also, unlucky there with my teammate crashing into my dead body. So, sorry teammate, but I couldn't really get out of the way anymore, I was dead. And uh, into the Spew Fighter. After using the Spew Fighter for a few games, I definitely rate it as a skip. I think it's kind of dog shit. It's, uh, it can be pretty good, I think, after you upgrade it and you get to go after the bombers with your upgraded uh, climb rate and uh, turn rate and stuff, but unspaded, it feels like a boat, it feels like you are a target practice for these fighter jets and you're just praying someone takes a head on and you one shot them. Or someone gets occupied with someone else. And uh, the K-43 is definitely a plane I'm scared of. This is an extremely strong plane. Uh, I think it's the best low rank Japanese plane to be honest, because uh, I think it has pretty good armament, it's pretty fast, it was outrunning me quite a few times, and it's out able to outturn many of these uh, British planes that I was flying, so... I think that's a plane I recommend to people, like especially in arcade, I don't know, or I don't remember how good it is in uh, the um, realistic. And by the way, guys, um, I actually already recorded three sessions, and one of them is for uh, Ground RB, so yes, I did play that, and I enjoyed it a lot, so I'm going to be playing more Ground RB. Uh, I was thinking about what a nation I should main for content. Like, which one is the most enjoyable? And, well, I imagine it would probably be America. Just as a starter. Because I'm genuinely god awful, I'm a fucking bot at Ground RB. And my favorite part of Ground RB is that you get to spawn at those planes and you get to fly them with the realistic settings. But you don't need to fly them for 17 hours until you reach the battlefield, so... It's way nicer than Air RB. So, <laughs> I was enjoying that a lot. I was taking out. Ah, okay, I'm not going to give spoilers. You're going to see it uh, in two days, I believe, because, yeah. He has a Spitfire. He's ignoring me. This is the situation I want. Like, to have a position where I can shoot at them for free. And, well, I actually got a pretty good game with the Bio Fighter here. Like, it's definitely going to help it, but I think I'm averaging, like, uh, more, more deaths than kills with this so far, so it's definitely needed. No doubt about that. Um, the I-15 here, he is unfortunately a biplane for him. So if I land just one 20mm hits, he's basically dead. Of course, if he manages or realizes I'm here and turns, I cannot possibly catch him. But, you know, it's a new player probably not going to realize I'm here. Well, most of the time it's going to be a new player anyway. I-15 is kind of an exception, because people are like to go go with it to pop stuff people. Because the I-15 is, uh, in my opinion, the best reserve plane in the game. Even better than the J-8. It's basically the J-8. Uh, pretty similar armament, but you are able to retain your energy better. And that just means that you have the most firepower, a lot of ammo, and uh, yeah, first place. Uh, you have firepower, a lot of ammo, um, you're pretty fast, and uh, you're insanely maneuverable, maneuverable. So, big respect to that plane. Alright, there's the Typhoon. The Typhoon is another one of my absolute favorites, just because of its uh, speed. I think it's kind of hard to do well on it, if you don't have it spaded, but after you get it spaded, you just literally outrun everything, it's very strong. And uh, very fun too, it's uh, like HC-100 D1 without being a flying radiator and also with more firepower and better turn rate as well. So it's a really great plane. Even if you get up the edge to 3.7 you're going to be okay because you're just so fast. But alright, time to take it out. Let's see how well I do it with it with my first game. 
the P400 here is very exposed, but unfortunately I miss my shots and don't get the kill there. The I-36, he's definitely not able to match me in a turn battle, but uh, this plane definitely has a habit of catching on fire. It's not a flying radiator, but it is uh, basically a flying uh, bonfire. So, uh, it seems that that's a bit of a problem with this plane, I noticed. But, I mean, you're not supposed to be in these situations where you need to take head-ons, you're supposed to use your energy. So that's something to just keep in mind while you're playing this, game, this uh, plane. It needs more skill. But okay, I guess I got f one kill with it. I'm surprised I got a kill there, or kill credit, but thank you game. Very nice to get that. Um, that poor H100 is uh, getting swarmed. And I do want to help him here. And it's an opportunity because all of them are low there. They have pretty low energy and even in a 3v1 I'm able to out dogfight them if I don't misplay it. But... I mean... I need to admit I did not play very well here. The P100 is on fire. Uh, and okay, I did get the kill on him. I'm surprised I didn't get the full kill credit for it, but hey, that's not that important. Then the Yak 1 as well. Yak 1, I think I'm actually able to out turn fight. I'm like one of the only planes that can do that. There's the Zeros and there's the Spitfires. Those are the only enemies that the Yak needs to worry about in that. At least that I know of. If you know some more, you can point them out. And I'm not counting five minutes here, I'm counting it in its own BR. And damn, I'm hungry. Um, for breakfast today I had some uh, Karelian pies. They are very very good. And I had some coffee as well, but it's starting to get pretty late already, so... Um, I probably need to eat something. Maybe I'm going to be eating some french fries. That wouldn't be too bad. <laughs> I got a uh, air cooker. And they are very good with the air cooker. They are crispy, they are crunchy, they are delicious. Absolutely recommended. I had no idea you could the air cooker would be so good, but it cooks them in like 15 minutes or 10 minutes. Uh, you don't need to worry about forgetting it on like an oven because it has a timer, at least mine has. I mean, that's obviously just a design thing, like you're going to have ovens with timers as well. And also, it just makes them so crispy. Like when you make the french fries in the oven, they are always so super... Uh, they are so... Yeah. You know, they are soggy. They have the fat from them all over them. But when you make them in the air fryer, it kind of removes the fat from them, so they uh, get crispy. Actually, like if I could prefer them, or choose them, I would choose french, fr french fries that have less... Uh, fat added to them. I think I actually prefer them in taste and in texture. So, you know, I should. Oh, by the way, I forgot that my. Or didn't notice that my ammo was running out there. And I took out the Hurricane Mark 4 to take out some bombers at the end here, but game's already over. This was a complete stomp by my team. And even though I got so many kills, I was just fourth place. Surprisingly enough. What are those? Okay, it's player activity stuff and stuff. I'm not too focused about that. And this is a really big upgrade, the 100 octane full fuel. It increases your speed by like 35 kilometers per hour. So with the Spitfire Mark 1A, you definitely want to go for that first. Mm, excuse me. All oh, right, the typhoon. And I got a uh, rank doesn't matter, so looks like I am in a full up tier, so 3.7, and well that's definitely not too nice, because I think that's that this is definitely not the kind of plane you want to be having in an up tier when it's not spaded, but I mean, I can still do okay, because in arcade battles, the up tiers seem to work a little bit differently, I'm not sure how they work exactly, but it feels like you get like a 1.3 battle rating differences between the highest and the lowest, lowest rating guy, rated guys. And then of course like when someone loses their you know, number one plane, they are going to take out their biplanes and sit. I mean usually not, but still. Okay, there again I got a lit on fire from basically one hit and unfortunately I'm going down. I made the mistake of taking the head on again. So once again, Typhoon, two deaths already. 
like after getting one kill as well, which is funny. Just because I'm taking the head-ons and I shouldn't be taking them. But alright. Is this the Spitfire again? No, is this... This looks like the Spitfire. No, this is a hurricane. No, this is a Spitfire. This is the Spitfire. Oh god, they, uh, that makes sense. For a second I thought I already used it, but yeah. It's still here. I haven't used it yet. Mm, I like this position. The La 5 is pretty low. If he, if he stays alive long enough, I'm going to be able to kill him and... The P400 is quite far away. And I'm not too worried about the IL-2 or the a sum numbers uh, plane either, because yeah, they're not that dangerous. JU-87 is basically a flying stat card um, or a flying stat padding bonus. If I go for him, I'm going to be guaranteed to kill him, but you know, of course possible that my team kills him before I get to him in time. The JU-87 is so slow. Yes, it has armor, so it can be pretty hard to take down, but, you know, it's a lot of new players flying with them, it's a very popular well-known plane, so... People just take it out first, after they start playing the game. It's like an Abrams or a F-16. You know, it gets a lot of players just because it's so popular. Or a Spitfire, to be honest. Or a... BF-109, those extremely famous planes that everyone's heard of. And I'm uh, dodging the head-on here, but... Oh, okay, nice, I don't hit the floor. Oh my god. And yeah, you can see I completely run circles around this yak if I get the chance to dogfight him. So this is a disgusting plane. Highly recommended. Okay, I don't run circles, but I'm catching up to him. And he came in with energy advantage, so just think about that. Like, this would even be even worse if I was coming into this battle with... Uh, while I'm missing some energy. But he had the advantage at the start. Yeah, I even got the eye for eye. But, <laughs> okay, the P400 was behind me. I definitely should have gone for some extra defensive maneuvers there. I just made it too easy for him to hit me. I just didn't realize he was there. Coming, coming. I prefer the universal here. Um, you know, just because they increase your damage. I don't really need the traces for these, actually. It's better if people don't see them flying at them, because that way they could dodge. And because the bursts with these guns aren't that good, they could actually, like, be able to dodge the 20 millimeters like that. So I, I wanna ha avoid the possibility of that happening, so... Universal is better. The IL-4 is a pretty juicy target, he basically doesn't have a way to fight against me, but unfortunately I am flying a very slow plane. So if I miss this approach I'm going to take a long time, but yeah, he just explodes out of the sky. You know, that's the power of these bio fighters. They might be flying boats, but um, they have a lot of firepower. You can't take that away from them, like you would be lying if you didn't see it. But unfortunately, even against the Lag-9, you can't really do anything. And now in this position, I'm a flying uh, stash padding target, because, yeah, I'm going to die, for sure. I think I could maybe hop onto that gunner, and if I saw my enemy, like, <laughs> where he is, I could maybe take him down like that, but I'm not skilled enough with the uh, bomber um, gunners like that. In realistic, I'm a, lot, I'm a lot better with them, because planes are not able to do the maneuvers the same way. And honestly, when I'm uh, flying the plane, the uh, target indicator honestly just makes me more confused than less confused. Unfortunately, I do not get a lead on fire yet, so I get to take some shots and actually get him on fire, I think. Um, so I might get the kill there. But, uh, I'm too slow. Just an assist as well. But not too bad, as again for the PU fighter. I'm not expecting some crazy 1v9s here. Hurricane Mark IV. My previous video was about me blowing people up with the Hurricane, but unfortunately because it's a battle rating 2.0 and it's getting up yet to battle rating 3.7, it's a lot harder to be effective. Like I can still come in and surprise people, but I really am like outperformed in flight characteristics. 
and even my firepower that used to be extremely impressive, like a thing like Aira Cobra that I mentioned is extremely OP. And Aira Cobra Cassiali has this level of armament while also being very good at climbing very fast, very maneuverable, and having secondary guns that are better. So, um, yeah, this thing is not able to compete at all. But still. The high fire power means that if I see a bomber, I can take them out. And okay. A good game there. I can definitely be proud of that. I got some nice hits. But I did into my Typhoon again, which I want to be using because I want to upgrade it as fast as possible, but this isn't how you upgrade a plane there as fast as possible. This is how you take 20 matches to upgrade it. Okay, Spitfire upgrade, radiator, extra speed, extra, extra everything, pretty nice. The, the next Bio Fighter I'm going for that next, just because. It's a 2.7. I'm not going to KV up there after I get it. And uh, here, uh, to be honest, I was AFK at the start, but I was very lucky because the lag tree did not kill me. Uh, I was using the bathroom at the start. <laughs> but, well, I guess, you know, I was just a bait. I'm just that good. Um, the Yak 9 is still faster right now because I did those maneuvers, but. The BF-109, he's actually a BF-109F, so he's a very high level BF-109. I definitely do not stand a chance against him. I am faster, and if he makes mistakes, then I'm going to be able to kill him, but it really shouldn't happen. I'm pretty sure that the F-1 is like... Well, it must not be above 3.7, so I guess it's like a 3.3 .3 or something. And I'm on fire again, so one kill again. Unfortunately getting up yet. You know, while the Typhoon might be okay with its speed, you need to use it as a boomer zoomer if you're up yet, like you don't have any other options. I almost got hit by him there, but I managed to dodge. Uh, fortunately, the Spitfire very very nimble, so now I have him basically. The Yak-9. Once again, this is the only plane that can match the Yaks in uh, dogfights like this, with proper firepower anyway, except some other planes I might not know of. And yeah, the Yak-90, it's, um, it was above 3.7, so it was 3.7 or 4.0, that plane. So not very fair, I think all of these matches have been up the so far. So <laughs> very unlucky matchmaking here, but it is what it is. And someone is firing rockets at me. I'm not very used to the rocket sounds, but um, in this recording I actually had that happen pretty few times. And, uh, well, fortunately that IR-2 is not made out of uh, stalinium of the same level as the IL-8 that you saw in the intro. It was the wildest thing ever, because I was attacking him with my hurricane. And I probably hit him with 300 to 400 bullets, you know, coming behind him. And his wing fucking flew off, and he just skipped on flying, and he just took me out with his tail gunner. Probably the AI tail gunner too, so I was even worse than him. Like, he didn't even outskill me, he just... <laughs> AI did the work for him. So yeah, Stalinium was definitely at work there, and... I, I think the IL-2, IL-8, they are very very good planes. I IL-2 may be less so, but that's just because it's a lower battle rating, you get a... Easier opponents as well. Uh, I'm fortunately able to um, shoot him there, and getting the severe damage means that even though I am flying with a boat, he's also not flying with a boat. The IR2 is not very maneuverable anyway, or not that super maneuverable anyway. So, yeah, able to take him down there. And the Pew Fighter actually holding its ground right now. Um, I forgot that I did so well. I like felt like that I was doing badly, because in situations like this I'm used to getting my guns on target. But because this is a flying boat, it's very hard. And yeah, I'm just going down again after one kill. Uh, it is what it is. The, I'm surprised the HC-112 actually was able to kill me, because it's not that deadly, to be honest. It has very big guns. 
Okay, hurricane, mark four. And uh, well, he's just flying a purely superior plane. I am a bit confused about how that didn't kill me. That uh, bullet, I think he hit me with a 37mm once. <laughs> and my plane looks like it's in pristine con condition, but then you look at the actual, you know, stat card and it's all black. My engine is dead as well. So, <laughs> he definitely got a severe hit on me. Severe damage. Uh, I'm just dead. It's not really fair for this aircraft. I'm losing my very good stats with it right now. It was my runner-up in KDA and or KD until this match, but now it's definitely not until this recording. Um, the Warhawk very slow right now. Um, just open to me killing him for free. Mig three very bad turn rate. I'm going to be able to kill him in the turn fight. The P35, P39, excuse me, is definitely the higher priority target. I need to kill him because if I don't kill him, uh, he's going to be an issue. I have a better turn rate him than him, but he's going to be out climbing and out uh, outspeeding me in a moment. So I want to get rid of him while I have the opportunity to dogfight him. And I mean, of course, in this. Rank everyone is just trying to dogfight everything, so you are going to get a lot of free kills like that. With just a better turning brain. You know, the higher you go, the harder those things are to get. But on the other side, you are not going to lose kills because people crash into each other and uh, you don't get the kill credit for them. Because, you know, when you are going faster, it's easier to dodge someone ramming into you and. Well, <laughs> you start expecting it after it happens to you 300 times. So, my teammates don't have it happen to me there either. Third place this time. Again, very good placing. I think it's the, in terms of stats, I'm actually like on top of the uh, team in every game right now, but I'm just not getting those insane uh, kill montages. <laughs> um, so far, I'm going to get them in this recording session, I promise. Finally an upgrade for the Typhoon. Much needed. Much, much needed. Uh, it's already at 616 km per hour, so... I think it's faster than the fully spaded uh, Spitfire, and it's like 100 km faster than the Hurricane. So, very nice plane. And it gives you a bit different play style with the Great British planes, because all of their other planes are turn fighters. The Hurricane and the Spitfire. So with this one you get an opportunity to be uh, playing as a boom and zoomer. So yeah, like that. But a uh, fair warning here. Um, I did not expect this to happen. Here I crashed into the wall because uh, this plane actually freezes up when you're going at fast speeds. Um, so it might be a bit of a problem. So be beware of that, okay? The rudder isn't very good at turning. And again, I died immediately. So a bit, a bit awkward. My two best planes immediately lost at the start. Because of me flying into the enemy or the ground. Very embarrassing so far, but... Fortunately, there's a HC-51 for me. To put my stats on. And well, here you see. I think the MiG-315 MiG is way over tiered. I... I remember when I used to play this game before, it used to be at 1.7 and now it's at 2.7. It has absolutely no business being here. Um, everyone was using it because it was very good at 1.7, but at 3.7, or uh, excuse me, 2.7, now it's dog shit. What does it do? What are you supposed to do with it? Like it's just a free target. And this is with a plane that is actually lower better rating than it. And not that good with the hurricane. It's still a target practice with it. Um, for some reason, those guns were something different than you saw there for a moment. But yeah. JU87, he's going down. Uh, my teammate here is looking for the kill, but I already have some pretty fatal damage on it, so. Kill is going to me, I'm afraid. Uh, excuse me, my girlfriend is sending me messages, I'm going to respond. And naturally, I'm able to do it in an instant, because I'm just that fast. I did not edit anything. HC 112 in my sights. 
he's uh, I'm actually faster than him, which uh, surprises me. But that must be because he's uh, already like damaged or something. But rather easy kill. I kill him before he gets to really shoot me. So you know that's a positioning advantage going in. Very advantageous, advantageous, and already five kills. And I'm not noticing to be a one and nine flying at me, which I'm very lucky that I didn't die there. Although he's also very lucky he got even to he even got to hit me because he was getting targeted like that, and he just decided to focus on getting a kill and not uh, dodging. Even though I feel like he definitely could have tried to dodge. Yeah, these guns are very nice to take out these machine guns. Because you just do a short burst and one of your bullets is going to hit them. You know, because it's a so soft target. Um, very easy to land your shots on. But I think there is someone above me right now. Yes. I should have noticed him. I actually got a hit at the end there, so I wonder if I hit him or if I hit the, hit the artillery on the ground. Time for the 40mm guns. And actually getting a hit with them. Unfortunately, hunting bombers isn't that easy with these low level fighters. I think bombers are OP until uh, like... 2.7, where people get higher caliber guns, because they can just, they start so fast, and so high up, they can just basically AFK and end the match before anyone goes to deal with them, because it's not worth your time and it's not very fun to climb after them like this. You see me, like I had to cut there, I probably was flying towards it for two minutes, until he decides to turn, and well, now he's just going to die. Unfortunately, I'm hitting my or not hitting my shots at all. Only six cannon ammo he left, but if I do hit a one, he is going to die. I'm absolutely certain of that. Come on, there we go. He's dead, guaranteed. No, but it wouldn't hurt to get some more hits on him for it. I'm surprised that my machine gun actually jumped there, in those bursts. I don't know what was happening with that. BB-1, very easy target here. But he does have a lot of speed. Um, not that easy because of the position, he's just going so fast. E, E, the BF-109 E-1, took a head on good opportunity for me to attack him. And, oh my god, he just blew up. Yeah, a BB-1, a pretty easy target. It's basically the exact kind of opponent I want to fight with this plane. But the K-43 is like the exact opposite of what I want to fight. Looks like he's also using the stealth belts, so it's probably a pretty good player, so... I don't wait where I am dead here. I made fun of the B109 for just going for the kill instead of, you know, trying to escape. But in this case, I don't think there's escaping for me. He's basically flying a zero with good guns. Now, uh, there's some uh, pretty twist targets down there, but because I am flying a boat, it's very hard for me to pitch down for them, so I need to go go for this guy first. For some reason he decided to ignore me. I'm not sure what he's thinking, but you know, exposing himself to me like that is very stupid. I need to really screw up not to kill him there. And I even, <laughs> just to make it clear that he fucked up, I, I hit him with the wing. Totally intended. I'm rather surprised I didn't die there. It's just sometimes it happens, you, you just end up being way more durable than you're supposed to. Physics engine gets confused. 
Heinkel 51 going for the head on. Um, unfortunately for him, he did not win it. Better luck next time. I'm sorry, it was a great strategy. Just got unlucky. Yak 7B, annoying flame. And of course, it's a high level player playing it. But interesting to see his stat card. Like, he's basically played every single nation until tier 3 or something. <laughs> he's got like 50 vehicles in each uh, tree. Mm, use my last universal backup just to make it more aesthetic when I'm respawning the planes. I know I should keep it, but I prefer not keeping them. Fortunately, my enemy there died to the airfield. I don't get the chance to get the stats from him. Um, that is severe damage times two. But I don't know if I'm going to get the kill. That's just because... Yeah, his... The match is ending. Actually, I remember now. For severe damage, you do get the match end credit. Like, when the match ends here, I'm going to get... Uh, Severe uh, kill counted or something like that. And if I could hit him a bit more time here, I could also, I could also get the severe damage counted on uh, the Focke Wolf as well. I just need some time. He's getting close to it. So close. Okay, I did not get it. I just got it for the bomber. But close. Twelve air targets. Perfect. And uh, those twelve kills are also with. Unspaded planes. As I progress here, they are definitely going to get more effective. And actually, I got the Bio Fighter unlocked right there. Now, do I think the Mark X is, is uh, good? No, I think it's bad. I think it's worse than the 2.3. I think it has worse flight characteristics. It just has better guns, and I don't know if that's worth it. <laughs> to be honest, I mean. Um. I mean, it's just so slow. You feel uh, even more like target practice than with the Viewfighter, the original version. And I don't know if the third version of it is even better. Probably not, to be honest. But, well, that's the second upgrade for the Typhoon. It's getting close to the critical mass where I can actually get a lot of kills in a match. And to be honest, I should have been getting those kills already. I'm just taking head-ons and flying into the terrain. Which is causing me to die faster than I should. And, well, I'm not going to use the Biofighter here. I want to use the Typhoon. I climbed up very high up because this is a plane that is very good with that. And, well, there I get the lucky. The BF-109 does not want to take the head-on. I guess he does not know that he's very victorious in it. So I'm saved from my own hubris there. I think he's expecting to catch up to me or something after he dodges out of my guns, but nobody, you are not catching a typhoon. Um, I don't know if I should even go for the maneuvers or just go directly for the deck. Because now I'm at 600 km per hour and he definitely is not accelerating anymore, while I am extremely fast. Get a little drive-by hit there. Maybe get a drive-by heal over, uh, drive-by kill over here. Yes, I did. But uh, oops, <laughs> I was not supposed to hit my enemy. So once again, I'm griefing myself to cause my KDA to be lower, or KD to be lower. But let's not focus on the KD too much. I've I just had really good matches, so I'm not focusing it on it now. I shouldn't count <laughs> my skills with that. It's not very smart. I should be having fun. Once again, focusing on stats or progressing in the game, both of those are not the best way to play the game. You just need to have fun. One air target destroyed. In the end. And get two. Although I think the Focke Wolf 200 is on fire. I think I am going to be getting him as well. Spitfire in a map like this, in a game state like this, it's perfect. Everyone is super low. Everyone's like taking these 1v1s against me. And, well, I have a lot of uh, energy right now as well. Perfect opportunity for this plane to sign. I just need to not screw it up. There's a P66. 
I'm not exactly sure how what kind of a plane that is, but well, I'm going to be seeing it later on. A lot more. I imagine it's not that good because I don't hear or see it that often. So, kit and a pipe plane. And an IL-2. The IL-2 is definitely planning to do something here, but that's why I'm going to target him. Now he is getting targeted by my entire team, so it's just a competition for who gets the kill. But I'm in a very good position here. Yes, I get the kill. And attack my allies in the process, because you know, I'm just a good teammate like that. Besides, he was going for our guy on the airfield there. I need to protect him. I need to eliminate him as fast as possible. Can't risk having him get to him. I'm just doing it for my altruistic beliefs. My desire to win this match. The P400. Definitely the rocket I'm most worried about here. The Warhawk. He's not that much of an issue. Um, like, when I get into this dogfight, he's going to start losing his speed and become a non factor. And, well, I already got the severe damage on him, so he's crippled already. I'm going to get the kill on him eventually. And if I manage to get some more hits on the P400. I'm actually going to get the kill on him too. Yes, I got the severe damage. He's actually going down as well. He managed to exting extinguish the fire, but I imagine his engine is out. Or maybe his all, all of his gas uh, burnt up, and that's why he got unfired himself. Yeah, the kill is mine. Unfortunately for that guy who ramped into the enemy. Our... Uh, Guys, I did not manage to capture the B-point. It's uncaptured right now, so I'm going to go for it right now. Not something I like doing, because you're almost guaranteed to die. Everyone is just going to just sprint for you. <laughs> they just want those free kills on the airfield. But hey, the airfield is mine. I'm playing for the team. And it does give you a lot of points. It's worth like 1.5 kills. So if there's a possibility of getting it, don't be afraid of taking it. Yeah, I'm dead. Good run for the Spitfire Mark 1. Killed by a uh, Hawk. P36 Hawk. Not one of my favorite planes, but I've mentioned that before. Now, first time for me to use this uh, flying boat with extra guns, and well, this certainly is not the most impressive showing for this plane, getting one shot by from the sky. But, I mean, if I was flying some other plane, I would also get one shot from the sky because I wasn't paying attention. You can't really blame the plane for that, for my skill issue. Let's not think about it more, because I'm not going to do well on it anyway. That kind of planes, I'm not good with them. I need to practice more with the heavy fighters, or the double engine heavy fighters. To be an engine is the correct term, I believe. Now I guess I should talk about the topics I prepared for this um, video. I've just been yapping about the game so far. I guess it's like partially me feeling in the zone here. Partially like me feeling comfortable as well. Six air targets destroyed, three deaths, not bad. And these topics that I want to mention. They are extremism in Europe. Coming back. It's taken uh, 80 year of vacation, but it's come back now. For sure, not as bad as it was before, but it's definitely heading that direction. And some some of you might think that is a bit ridiculous to say. But with the political climate right now, people have very extreme opinions. Historically very extreme opinions, and when you get extreme opinions, you get extreme actions. And I'm certainly not excited to see what is going to happen with that. It's, I guess it's kind of partially because of um, the failure in education. Because everyone is able to play video games all day, or watch videos or whatever else. The average student has gotten significantly worse in the last few years, around the world. This is not the fault of the 
this generation of teachers or some places school policy that you might want to blame. No, it's a general and global issue right now. Students have simply gotten worse, in the last five years especially. We have lost like 30 years of progress in a few years. Because of people not studying, not taking their courses seriously, not being uh, convinced that their education is worth it. And that leads to people not knowing what they are talking about. And when you don't know what you are talking about, you are going to get the Dunning-Kruger effect. Especially for politics. Everyone thinks they are right for politics anyway. And now you get people who have no idea thinking they are right about politics. While in the past they would think, well, I don't know anything, I, I'm not political, or you would have someone like, oh, I believe in equality and everything, but because it's viewed as cringe to believe in those things now, <laughs> people don't believe in them as much. And that's the fault of the internet directly, those echo chambers with 17 year olds, or to be honest, more like 14 year olds, thinking they know everything. And then you see this reflector in all of these policies. I'm sure uh, the new tolera tolerancy towards foreigners, towards people with disabilities, these things are going to get more uncommon, unfortunately. I don't know how much. I don't know what kind of effect it's going to have. But I'm very worried for the future because of that. It's the fault of social media. <laughs> I'm a fucking boomer in that. I'm, I just think it's the case. Although I don't know if it's a boomer on me anymore. I'm 21. It's like, I think it's a pretty common opinion around my circles. Okay, we have a view fighter here. I hope I get the kill <laughs> there. I think I should. No, I don't. I'm dead. I need to just fly away. So, some things besides the tolerancy in Western Europe disappearing. Another thing that might happen is more authoritarianism. Because when you have less educated and more extreme people, they tend to elect leaders who are populist who are saying what they want to hear and give very simple answers to very complex problems that no one really knows an answer for. Fascism is what happens when you have those people getting into power. It's similar to like the way I'm worried about Trump. Like if you don't know how Vladimir got Putin got into power just recently, like the political landscape is very similar to that. Obviously different situations, different different people, different time, etc, etc. But you get the point. Very similar. Okay. I want to get the gears with this. <laughs> Getting those explosions is so satisfying. And I do need to improve my crew, by the way. I need to remember to go into the crew thing and improve the C-tolerance. So I keep on... Okay, so I can keep on making the normal maneuvers that people are making in this level. Nice. Just before I go down, I get the kill there. Fortunate. Very fortunate. In and up tier as well. I'm again up tier. Would be nice to get down tier. Wouldn't it? But, you know, I wasn't... I wasn't happy that I was getting down tier constantly before in my previous videos, so... I shouldn't complain <laughs> about the updates now. Nice, he's down. Just a kill assist, unfortunately. Usually you would get the aircraft finished when you deal the finishing blow like that, but I guess he was so damaged already. Maybe he was missing his engine. I am still flying. Oh yeah. I guess that also means that he didn't die immediately either. And, uh, am I going to get the kill for him? I don't think. 
think so. Okay. We lost. Yeah, what do you think about my opinion on that? On the extremism? It's, uh, in my opinion, the worst thing to do is to have extreme opinions. I'm a very centrist, I guess. You people are going to call me centrist. I'm just not extreme. I'm not particularly. I don't have any extreme opinions on these things. At least I don't view them as extreme. Maybe I'm in my own echo chamber here in that sort. But I would be very interested in what you guys have to say about that if you watched this far into the video. Uh, and also leave a like, follow, check out my next part of uh, this series. I'm going to be uploading it tomorrow. And remember guys, keep your rooms ventilated because you stay inside a lot. And if you stay inside a lot, you want to be in a fresh environment. Bye bye.